Teddy Covers. Teddy Covers coming to us live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I love these Fridays so much. Teddy Covers, my man, how are you doing on this Friday morning? Football Friday, my friend. How are you? I am doing good. First off, excellent call on the Milwaukee Bucks yesterday. Uh, there, I would before we get into Football Friday. I would like to just touch on because I I got to touch on with Donnie, but not off the top of the show. The big big World Series Game Three, and as well, I'd like to touch on NBA uh, World Series Game Three. Do you see Anibal Sanchez regressing back to the mean and looking like the Anibal Sanchez we remember, or is he an ace? The question is, is whether Grenke's an ace because he's being priced like one today. Um, my playoffs have been awful. I was right the first two games saying that the, the line was way out, of, way out of whack and the only thing you could do was take the nets. And I continue to look at this series as being a mispriced series from the get-go. And when you have a mispriced series from the get-go, the only thing you can do is take the undervalued commodity. Washington's been the better team through two days, through two games. All the pressure's on the dog. Uh, I could only take the Nets at the underdog price at home today. I could. That being said, I haven't bet it. I'm not going to bet it. Uh, I, I, if there's if there's a game that the Astros are going to win in this series, it'll be tonight. Um, you know, and yeah, whatever. Houston could still win the series, obviously. But I, it, it feels like a two to one series, not a three nothing. You know, or the series is already over type of deal. Uh, so I can understand why Houston is favored. I'm not betting it. Uh, I can only take Washington Plus, and this isn't the day to take Washington Plus. I think that's a very sharp breakdown. What is appealing to me is the under. In this baseball game, I've questioned Greinke, and we've already talked about it. I've questioned Greinke for years uh, and about his mental health, basically, and he's handled it really well for the last few years. And so he seems like he's in complete control of, of everything that's going on for him. And now he's watched... Cole and Verlander not step up, not rise to the World Series occasion, and I feel like he possibly can't. Now, you're right, he's being priced like an ace, but the under is appealing to me. What do you think of this total that's sitting at eight right now? So you're certainly getting the best of the number. I mean, all the money's come on the over in this game. Uh, so you're getting extra value if you want under in this one. I don't have a strong take on the total at all because I don't trust these starters. We've seen Houston's bullpen look vulnerable. We know that Washington's bullpen is vulnerable. And he asked me, what's the strength of the Astros right now? It's their lineup. What's the strength of the Nationals right now? It's their lineup. Everybody, you know, we talk about the aces, but the reason Washington's here now, they're, you know, they're tearing the cover off the baseball. And they have been, and they've been getting all the clutch hits and all the two out hits, um, which makes me a little bit reluctant to step in. I mean, this is all sharp money on the over. And I'm a little bit reluctant to step in front of it uh, for this one. So it's not uh, it's not an under I'm going to bet, uh, Jimmy. Uh, but not anything I'm going to try to talk you out of either. I, I'm, I'm not involved in the, in the total. I'm close to making a move. I like the four and a half here. I'm close to making a move on that first five, four and a half, and possibly the full game. But no need to rush it. Um, do we expect money just to keep coming in on the over? Can I wait? All the leading indicator books are showing, you know, eight over minus, you know, minus uh, minus eight at Penny now, minus 12 at Bookmaker, uh, minus 15 at Westgate, minus 15 at Caesars. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that much more over money. I, I, we've seen some. I'm not convinced we're going to see it. It's not like the, the the leading indicator books are like, yeah, we're about to go to eight and a half or we're at eight minus 25 or something like that. Uh, I, I wouldn't hesitate to lock in now. Okay, uh, I may. I just need a little bit more time. Uh, I, I started the playoff so badly. Then I went on a little three-game winning streak, got confident, and then got killed in Game 5 in New York, thinking the Astros were just going to put the series away. And It was a nice wake-up call. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay. Uh, I'm going to keep thinking about it. Uh, incredible call last night on the Milwaukee Bucks. I know we got a lot of football to talk about, but is there something that's staring you in the eye in NBA this evening? Yeah, there is. <laughs> what are the Lakers doing laying three and a half to the Jazz? I mean, the Jazz are the better team right now. Uh, that's a, that that line is a head scratcher to me. Um, I, I have Utah plus the points. I have Utah on the money line in my pocket. I've advised my clients to make that bet. Uh, I'm also interested in the Portland side uh, against Sacramento. Um, uh, I got no problem fading Luke Walton in a game he's got to win in, in order to cover. And I'm interested in uh, the Blazers off a loss. Uh, on opening night. So uh, that's one that's piqued my interest. I haven't bet it yet. 
Uh, but I'm certainly leaning in that direction and may well get to the window uh, with the Blazers as short road chalk uh, before tip off. So that's two uh, that I'm interested in. There was a couple more. You know, I've, I feel like I should pull the trigger on the Celtics tonight. Two and a half is cheap. Uh, at the same time, I want to see them. What happened in Philly the other night is concerning in the second half. And, and maybe we want to see Boston play a good game before we get involved with them. Uh, I wanted to take Minnesota. At uh, Charlotte, uh, my number was, <laughs> I thought I had it priced high. Uh, my number was uh, T-Wolves minus three and a half. Uh, oops, the markets came out five and a half. <laughs> so uh, I'm not getting there. Uh, and I lean OKC as well. Uh, I haven't, I uh, didn't play it, haven't played it. I, I'm really not looking to lay a lot of chalk the first week of the season. I'm not. Uh, but the Wizards had a pretty fraudulent cover the other night. And OKC, uh, I think, might be a notch or two better than, uh, than the markets are giving them credit for right now. So lean thunder minus the points at home uh, in their home opener against the Wizards. I love it. Uh, I love it. Uh, also, by the way, I didn't I, – I needed to make that bet that we talked about with the Capitals, Canucks under 6.5. At my book, there's been a 15-cent move since we talked about it, and it's now from 6.5 down to 6. So another example of uh, needing to fire. I could pay for the 6.5 minus 135, but we know you'll have to hit 60% of those at that point. Very um, – Upsetting. Very, very, very upsetting. Uh, Jesus. Okay. So, uh, Donnie, let... Or, sorry, uh, sorry, I'm all flustered now. <laughs> I get that. Uh, that yeah, so you're bad, dude. You lost a bet. Uh, um, and that's, you know, one of the things that happens when we do live shows, okay? I mean, I, I'm sure your day is a lot like mine in a sense, Jimmy, and that you're walking around, you're making bets on your phone, you know, or you're aware of what the lines are at various points during the day. Sometimes you're on air and it just happens, you know? Uh, again, I, I don't like to bet on air. I... I I used to do it on occasion, and one time I made a bet, and I didn't double-check, and I had the wrong side. I'm like, I'm never doing that again, uh, especially because I spent like three hours rooting at home. <laughs> you know, I came in and, and bad beat faster for the other side, and then I'm like, oh, my God, it was me that just got bad beat. I, I, I punched in the wrong thing, and that was, a, you know, I'm like, I will never do that again. Uh, so I, I focus when I, when I place my bets. I mean, I don't do it on air, which means that on occasion we're going to miss bets because we're on air. It's just the nature of the game, and that's part of – the the cost of what we do when it comes to our own bankroll is that when you're on air and you gotta you gotta give opinions and you have to you know you can't be sitting there you know oh, 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 looking for it. it just it just works out that way so don't beat yourself up too bad off <clears throat> no uh, you're right um, okay um, give me a smile come on okay, Jimmy okay there, it's, it's you know what I'd like to smile because I think your call on the Blazers is spot on so we know that Buddy Heal De'Aaron Fox both sustained ankle injuries on Wednesday Walton says that that De'Aaron is good to go should be ready to go uh, Buddy did not practice hopefully he'll be able to go so I mean Heald I mean you have these guys are De'Aaron Fox is the future of this team and you combine that with Heald, who puts up 28 in game one, six three-pointers against Phoenix, and they're both hurting. The Kings were outscored 70-36 in the second half of that opener, 27 turnovers. So, it, you know, I know that there's a lot of us in the thinking in, in capping where, where we want to back a team that's just been embarrassed, but do we want to back a team that got had their – key players sustain ankle injuries and that is the reason why they lose and and I think that your call on Portland just makes a ton of sense and even if they come back are they going to be healthy are they going to be able to take care of business talking about a, a Portland team that loses 108 100 to the Nuggets uh, to, to open the year Lillard 32 points eight assists but man I mean they're not hitting threes Nuggets go 18 for 32 from three. The Blazers go 7 of 28. I think this is a good call, and it makes a ton of sense to me. The Jazz Lakers has a lot of moving parts that I might want to spend a little bit more time out. Uh, Joe Anisi saying uh, Bagley out of the lineup. Bagley's out for now how long? That was my first thing here. He's out for, what, six to is six weeks yeah, or something hurt. like that? Um, he's hurt prop. So this, I'm going to uh, jo- thank you because that was a game we didn't get to. And, uh, and I want to stay away from totals early in the year because we just don't have enough. Uh, we're, in, it, it's in, we're incapable of analyzing pace with the new players, the new rotations. So I'm going to take Portland. I'm getting uh, minus two and a half uh, at minus 105 at Heritage. I'm going to take the Blazers minus two and a half at minus 105 at Heritage. Uh, great call. 
Thank you. And, and picking a game that we didn't get a chance to touch on is uh, enormously important. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Uh, and Joanne, he's saying four to six weeks. Uh, I love it. Okay. Uh, let's move on to college football. And we've had some questions come in, and I've missed them because I was uh, dealing with my own bullshit here. Uh, first off, there was a question from our Nut Flush Allen says, to ask Teddy after the game last night with Houston versus SMU, I want to fade Houston big next week after using up as much as they had left uh, mentally. What do you think of fading Houston after that uh, big game for them last night? Conceptually, I'm with you 100%. I mean, Houston overachieved in a, number, in a, in a couple of different ways last night. Um they're not very good defensively. They're not very good offensively. Uh, but one thing that I don't do usually, uh, I, I don't even know who Houston's playing next week. I don't remember it. You know, uh, I'm not even going to look about that or think about that until uh, after the games on Saturday when I start doing my uh, my post game analysis. But in theory, yeah, I want to bet against the Cougs. I wanted to bet against the Cougs last night, and it didn't do me any good. But uh, I'd love to. Uh, uh, that my opinion that Houston is being a bet against team hasn't changed uh, off of last night's surprising showing. All right, and uh, Joe Anisi, also uh, his work play of the day is the Blazers minus two and a half, and I copied and pasted that, but I was just moving so quickly that I didn't sit and stare at it enough to uh, realize that that was a great play. So I'm rolling with Joe Anisi and Teddy Covers on the Blazers minus two and a half. Okay, we have a big college football game this evening. Teddy, USC, Colorado, USC opening up at minus 12, now 11 and a half and 11s on the board. This total opening up at 61 and a half, now 64 and a 64 and a half at a couple books. Heritage, Intertops, Bet 365. Do you have an angle on side or total here tonight? I don't. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a tale of two teams that I don't trust in their roles. You know, Colorado down the stretch. Like, remember, they started the season 6-0 and oh, and then uh, didn't they lose every game the rest of the way? Uh, I mean, they, were, they had nothing left down the stretch of the season. And if you watch the Buffs play the last two weeks, they've looked a whole lot uh, like the team that had nothing less, left uh, down the stretch. Uh, last season, particularly on the defensive side. I mean, but it's really both sides uh, of the football. You know, Montez hasn't been protected and can't be protected right now. The passing game hasn't worked. They're not running the football effectively. Uh, and the defense is getting gashed. Colorado's not a team uh, I'm looking to put my money on at this stage of the campaign. So the other option is, oh, do I trust USC to lay doubles on the road in Boulder? Hell no, I don't. You know, undisciplined team. A uh, team that, if uh, you talk about a team that's more likely to shoot themselves in the foot, you know, <laughs> Uh, USC is pretty high on that list. They're just, this is not the role that I want the Trojans in, um, laying this price in a, in a hostile environment, in a, in a cold environment. No, I'll leave it alone. Leaving it alone. I'm copying, pasting questions coming in and we're going to go over Teddy's looks, but first off, and, uh, uh, we have to do this because Corey Simmons put so much energy into the show, and he asked twice, and I kept moving. But uh, man, I just love this guy, uh, and he put so much energy into the show. So we're gonna step back for a second for Corey. Corey talking about this Mavericks Pelican spot, saying, "Can you ask Teddy how he feels about the over in Dallas, New Orleans? It's been sitting at 228 all morning. At least I didn't check it last night in this Dallas, New Orleans spot. So." I'm very impressed with the Pelicans, Teddy, and uh, I hope they lose as much as possible because uh, I want the value to increase on them as soon as they get Zion back. Uh, I loved what I saw from Derek Favors, Brandon Ingram, J.J. Redick, uh, the team. Ingram, 22 points. Josh Hart coming off the bench with 15 and 10. Redick coming in with uh, 16 points. Holiday, 13 and 6 uh, I think that this is a very good team, and, and I don't know what to make of the Mavericks right now with Chris Dapp and Luca running the show there. Uh, what are your fir- early feelings? On- oh, and also Dwight Powell will miss this game, uh, miss his second straight game, so there will be no Dwight Powell for the Mavs. Uh, what do you think about this total here that Corey's thinking about Mavericks, Pelicans sitting at 228? So there is one total in the NBA that I'm interested in, and I forgot to mention it. Uh, I was just looking down the sides. I didn't look at my other column with totals. The one total that I am interested in tonight is Minnesota, Charlotte over. Uh, we talked about the T Wolves over the other day, and they're they're a, let's play them over every game until proven otherwise. Right now, uh, Minnesota is going to run like crazy. New Orleans is. I mean, the pace is fast. The offensive execution was pretty darn good. Their bench play was tremendous uh, against Toronto. You know, I went into that game thinking the Raptors would have the bench edge, and that in fact wasn't the case at any point during that contest. Um, you know, returning home off an OT loss for their home opener, we would expect 
the Pelicans to play with pace. I don't know that Dallas wants to play with pace with them. And that's the concern here uh, for total wise. You know, New Orleans wants to push Dallas, not necessarily in that same mindset. And when it comes to early season play, I want so I, I when I have a team that I think is mispriced a little bit in the markets, like Minnesota coming out of the gate, who had the fastest offense in the NBA in the preseason, and the, you know every quote out of Saunders is "We're going to run, we're going to run, we're going to run." Uh, uh, I'm not getting that from Gentry, so I, I don't feel like this is a mispriced total in that regard. Uh, if I had to play it, I would look over, but uh, it's not one that I'm, I'm getting involved with. Good luck. All right, uh, great breakdown. Man, I, I can't wait to cap NBA with you all season long. What a treat this is going to be. Uh, okay, so let's move so, on to... Uh, Jimmy, oh, yes. let, let me jump in because you said something that stood out to me like a sore thumb. And if we're going to talk NBA theory, I, I'll, I'll do it real quick. But you said, I'm going to be betting on the Pelicans as soon as Zion comes back. As and long, one yeah. of the, my favorite things to do in the NBA is the superstar comes back and that's the team you fade for the first three games or four games when he gets back in the lineup because everybody's adjusting roles. So, And then the markets crash. They're like, oh, he just came back. They're not any good. They're not as good. And then four games in, you're like, all right, this is a team we can bet on. Uh, the little nuances are how do you make the money in the NBA, and that's a classic one. Zion's going to come back. The Pel- power rating of the Pelicans is going to shoot up two or three points, and there'll be a bet against their first one, two, three, even four games with Zion back on the court. That's a strategy that's made me a lot of money over the years. So uh, as, yeah. I, I wanted to bring it up here. No, just, uh, very... I like talking theory as opposed to, you know, uh, talking specific plays as much as I can because the theory will help you guys make money over the long term. The plays will, you know, uh, may or may not help you <laughs> depending on if I'm right or wrong. Uh, but I can at least break down the analysis. Uh, but the theory will help you moving forward and, and, and the play breakdown won't necessarily do that. So uh, that's why I like to talk theory any chance I get. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do this. I fade game one. I only do game one generally. I fade game one every single time a star comes back. And I do that in NHL nonstop. So I do that in NHL and NBA fade game one. What I was thinking more about the Pelicans is that if they can lo- keep losing right now, because I, I just – I think they're a very good team, and I loved what I saw from them against the Raptors. Uh, and, and these pieces seem to mesh much better than I expected them to, and we'll see if that continues. But I, I'm quite high on these uh, Pelicans. And when Zion comes back, I, I don't think he's going to be playing 40 minutes after a knee injury. I think they're going to slowly, slowly bring him in. So I don't think he's going to have too much, too much uh I don't. I know he's gonna have too much control over the pace and situations, but that's a great call about fading when the star comes back into the lineup. Let's take a quick look at what Teddy has done so far this week, and I have it all listed right here. Let's get over it. Teddy on Monday, Iowa State minus eight and a half, Texas plus one, Virginia minus three. He was on Arizona State, but he got off of it and jumped on UCLA. Then yesterday, he jumped on Charlotte, North Texas over, and he was close to taking Western Kentucky. Teddy, did you pull the trigger on Western Kentucky? Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, write it down. I did it right after the show. Uh, like I said, I was going to do I put Western Kentucky plus five and a half uh, in my pocket. I made some ads uh, to that uh, to that group. Just three, uh, three sides that I put in my pocket uh, last, uh, overnight or this morning. Uh, I put game number one, betting number 109, Illinois plus 10 in my pocket. That was my buy price. I've been waiting for 10 all week. We got it. Uh, I don't think Purdue is 10 points better than Illinois. And I understand the spot. With the Illini coming off a huge win. The week before, they took, you know, they gave Michigan a battle. Uh, Purdue's not a minus 10 team. Uh, and you look at the Boilermakers' wins this year, they've beaten the week. Uh, I, I think Illinois is good to hang around. Uh, I took Illinois plus 10 in that one. Uh, betting number 129. You know, this team, I said all week I was waiting for a plus three. The plus threes were widely available last night for a brief period of time. They've been bet back down mostly to two and a half this morning. Uh, but I got Central Michigan, the Chippewas in my pocket, betting number 129 uh, at Buffalo. Central hadn't won a road game since 2017 until last week. They got off the schneid with a win and cover. And they dominated that game even more than the 38-20 final score would indicate. I've talked about Central as being a bet on team. This is the uh, uh, a quality defense in a conference that doesn't have many of them. And Buffalo... They can't run the football. They're not going to win. I think Central shuts them down at the line of scrimmage. I like the chips uh, plus the spot. I think they're the better of the two teams catching a uh, field goal. Made me very interested. Uh, and the third bet that I made was Utah State. Uh, betting number 145, Utah State plus three and a half uh, against Air Force. 
And this is really, I mean, this is a, a season definer for Utah State. You know, they have underachieved a little bit. There's a lot of, you know, they spent the entire, you know, they, they talked about how they've been prepping for Air Force every chance they get here, there, the other. Extra time to repair for this week. It is a, a, a Utah State offense that is underachieved. You know, Love has not lived up to expectations this season. He talked about it. I was reading some quotes uh, from him earlier this morning, and it feels like the type of game and the type of defense that he can get right against. And, I mean, this is a battle. Uh, Utah State uh, Air Force is, is not going to be a game where one team's going to dominate. Uh, I'm anticipating this game come down to the wire. Last team with possession might win, but it's a field goal type game. I'll take plus three and a half every time when I expect someone to win by three. Uh, Aggies plus the points. So uh, there's a, a trio of dogs that I put in my pocket uh, for today, and that's probably all I'm going to have. We'll see what the markets do tomorrow morning. But like I said, this wasn't one of those weeks where I'm peppering going up and down the board, and I love this and I love that. Um, you know, a good handful, uh, maybe two handfuls, but not the, uh, not, a, not, not an armload uh, in college football this week. I like it. Uh, and I tailed Central Michigan last week, so I was very thankful for that. But the week did not go that well for me. Same story. I'm just falling apart late in, in the day, uh, and I haven't put up that record since I got back. Rafa, can we put up my college football record? It's ugly. Um, not, not sitting here proud, but still time to... Uh, to fix it. Still time uh, to fix well, it. Uh, let me let, let me jump in there, Jimmy. Sure. Okay, so you're four games under 500. You had 48% for the season. You're down 8.8 uh, 8 units. All right? That is not a disaster. You have not gone broke. You are not uh, driven your clients to the poorhouse. You're not, you're not making money. You haven't done well. But it's not one of these situations where you have, oh, my God, I'm an idiot, and beat yourself up over and over. No, you're a couple games under 500. The season is halfway done. You got plenty of time to have a good run in you, don't beat yourself up off of that. And you out there who are watching, your results are mediocre for a stretch, a little bit under 500. As long as you're not hitting like one of these stretches where you're going to hitting one out of three for a month and a half, you know, that'll kill you uh, and that'll burn you. You're a couple games under 500. It's not good. It's not what we want, but it's not, oh my God, everything I know about handicapping is wrong. Let's tear it all up. I'm an idiot. Da, 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 da. It's one of the things I like to know. What we want to do is stay in the game. Sustainability. You know, not pay, make yourself broke. It's not about getting rich quick as much as it is. If you like doing this, don't price yourself out of it by burning your bankroll. And as long as you're doing that and keeping yourself within your bankroll parameters, you'll be fine, man. Don't sweat it. Don't beat yourself up. It's okay. Yeah. It's not good, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. And, and I, you know what, I, I'm enjoying our, the Saturdays so much i i'm enjoying it and uh so i you know i i, and I still have a lot of hope to get that uh, back uh back in, in in plus units so i still have a lot of hope we have some questions coming in teddy and i'm gonna start hammering one is uh one that i'm just gonna shoot out at you uh because it was about that utah state game uh troy v and rich g thinking that that game over has to be the play in Utah, uh, Utah State Air Force. What do you think of the over at 58? So I, I don't disagree with the concept. You know, Utah State's supposed to be able to throw on that defense. Air Force, in theory, is supposed to be able to run on that defense. But I talked about this last week, and it cost me a winner. I mean, my first reaction for the Air Force-Hawaii game was, you got to bet this game over. You know, and obviously it flew over the total. But... I talked myself out of it, and I understand the rationale and agree with the rationale why I talked myself out of that bet, and that is very simple. Air Force is not an over team because their possessions are long, and the game gets shortened because of that. And when you have a team that goes on a seven-minute drive and then settles for a field goal, and then an eight-minute drive and then gets stuffed on fourth down from the seven-yard line, guess what? You ain't cashing your over ticket. Didn't happen against Hawaii because Hawaii didn't get any stops. I think Utah State's capable of getting more stops than Hawaii is. Uh, so I would be reluctant to play the over in that game just because of the pace of play that uh, Air Force uh, goes at. There's just not a lot of possessions in Air Force games, and that is, is hard to get. A, your offense efficiency really has to be there for Air Force to go over the total. And it was against Hawaii last week, but it hasn't been on a game-in, game-out basis, especially with their QB hurt. Hammond is a maybe here, the, the backup. And then that's a huge drop off the backup to senior. He's all right. Uh, but without Hammond, I definitely wouldn't play this game over. And that's why we've seen under money come in. Uh, Air Force is starting QB, not 100% to go this week. 
Okay, we have a lot of questions coming in, Teddy. And uh, one question for me. We have a capping team, a uh, couple capping team here in Tata, Booker and Lucky Lefty. And Lucky Lefty has asked me to uh, send you a message, Tata, how much he loves you. And I know this for certain. I know this for certain. We're stopping the show because you are so incredible, Tata. Lucky Lefty loves you. All right, let's get to work right now. Teddy, questions coming in, (laughs) coming in fast and furious. The first one we have is from Marks. Marks here says, Teddy, um, love the show. Have an opinion on Army versus San Jose State. We spoke about it yesterday, so let's keep it kind of brief. But can we help Marks out on this spot? Army versus San Jose State, Teddy? I don't have a strong take on it. I feel like it's a good bounce back spot for Army, uh, and Army is certainly a capable team. I'd much rather have Army catching points and laying double digits. San Jose with a QB who can chuck the football around. That could be a problem uh, for the Cadets' defense. All that said, you know we are talking about the West Coast team traveling out of conference for an early start game on the East Coast, and uh, I don't know that defensively San Jose is going to get a ton of stops here. So not a game I'm getting involved with. Good luck, however you decide to play it. Not a game is getting involved in. Okay, uh, we have Indiana, Nebraska. A Noli knows under that he's looking at for Indiana, Nebraska under fifty three and a half. What do you think of Noli knows is under in this spot? So I, I really tried to make a case for Nebraska, and I ended up deciding not to make the case. <laughs> but I don't know what. So but this is the story for this game: is we're not going to know who's starting a quarterback until tomorrow morning, and. If it's Adrian Martinez, that's a big difference. You know, if, if the panic versus Ramsey isn't as big a difference for Indiana. Uh, but Martinez versus the backups for Nebraska is a huge difference. And I can't even make it a, unless I know Martinez is playing. I have no interest in Nebraska. I have no interest in over. Uh, if he's playing, I mean, might be interested in both of those. So you just got to know if the QB is healthy for that game. And, and it's all game time decision. We're not even going to know today, I don't think, uh, whether Adrian Martinez is good to go. Okay, we have more questions rolling in. Prince of the City, North Carolina, Duke. He says, can you ask Teddy about this spot? Uh, Prince of the City is leaning towards North Carolina, and Duke laid an egg for us last week. Does Duke bounce back, or should Prince of the City jump on North Carolina? So my lean in this game is North. Uh, sorry, is Duke against North Carolina. I want the team off the triple OT loss. And remember, Tar Heels had that game won and covered twice. And both times, the defense couldn't get a stop. And that concerns me here against Duke, especially Duke coming off a real ugly showing. Uh, Blue Devils are passed for me. Uh, but then again, I got North uh, North Carolina wrong last week. North, All you do is take the dog in North Carolina games. You're doing pretty good this year. Uh, I wouldn't talk you out of that strategy uh, this time around either. Okay, copying and pasting all these questions coming in. Christian Walsh, what does Teddy Covers think? of this temple spot let me uh pull up the rotation number while i'm doing that 123 124 oh perfect 123 of course you got it memorized right now uh 123 124 what do you think of this spot is temple worth backing here yeah so it's funny that's the difference between a monday and a friday on monday i'm like what where is it on by friday i've already looked through the rotation like 40 times so i at least know it's at the top in the middle it's at the bottom i know where that i kind of have a feel for what that game is uh so the sp- Temple's blowout loss last week was a spot blowout loss. And my gut reaction is Temple's undervalued and Memphis is overvalued as a result this week. And then I started looking at Memphis Temple, a little, uh, Memphis Tulsa a little closer. I really wanted to play Tulsa. And the more I looked at it, the less I was inclined to get the wedding window uh, with Tulsa. And then you look at the other side of the equation where, you know, okay, so uh, maybe I don't want Tulsa against a team, a, Mem- a Memphis team that might be a little overvalued. But maybe I do want Temple against the Central Florida team, or, you know, because Temple a little undervalued here against the Central Florida team. We know how good they are. Okay, there's no there's no betting market surprises for UCF, and there's not a whole lot of betting market bargains for UCF at this stage of the game. I, I worry about Temple's defense uh, against this level of speed and talent. Uh, I do, uh, and the sharp money's been nothing but uh, UCF money all week. Um, all that said. I mean, I'm not playing it, but free bet, I might look at Temple. I think Temple is better than what we saw last week. And sometimes you see the markets crash on a team after a single bad showing when, in fact, the next week, they're right back to where they were. So lean Temple uh, won't bet it. 
Lucky lefty backing Nebraska minus one on that Nebraska-Indiana spot. Christopher Clementini says, can you ask Teddy about Texas State, Arkansas State, the total specifically? Christopher Clementini liking the over 60 in this spot. Texas State, Arkansas State, Teddy. Arkansas State's a dead nuts over team. Uh, You know, they can't stop anyone, and that offense is decent. The problem I have in this one is can the Bobcats score? Uh, I mean, I haven't seen that offense do anything against anybody. Uh, that makes me interested in playing one of their games over. Arkansas State's over all the way, but uh, it's a you know uh, in the, the offense in San Marcos has been uh, uh, limited at best this season, and that that concerns me with the total in this range. So uh, I'm not going to talk you out of it, but it's not anything that's on my radar. Big game, Wisconsin, Ohio State. Our bigger goose says whiskey is a play on. Says the best thing that happened for the Badgers backers this week was last week's L overreaction in price. What do you think of Ragu's breakdown? Short, tight breakdown there. So I don't disagree with the concept. I really don't. But I disagree with Wisconsin as being a bet on team. The Badgers lost last week. They were flat. Jonathan Taylor had a key fumble. They turned the ball over in the fourth quarter on the road. They were not focused on that game. All that is very true. And we have seen the markets, you know, (laughs) adjust accordingly. But... Two factors for me that are not going to have me on Wisconsin this week. One is I think last week was more the real Wisconsin than what we saw for the first six weeks of the season. We saw the first six weeks of the season with Wisconsin playing at home every week, getting all the right teams at the right times and teams that offenses didn't work. And I mean, it was, and when you have a stretch like that and you're undefeated and the market, everyone's paying attention to you. The markets don't, one loss uh, won't won't crash the markets on that. And their defensive numbers, again, number one defense in the country and all these different stats. And I think those stats are all fraudulent. So I'm not a Wisconsin believer. If Wisconsin falls behind and Cohn has to throw the football for them to win, they're dead. And I don't think Jonathan Taylor's running against Ohio State's defense. And I am a believer in the Buckeyes. And Ohio State is not a team I have any interest in stepping in front of. So... Ohio State or pass, and again, it's up to 14, up to 14 and a half today. The money's coming on the Buckeyes. I don't disagree with that. Uh, Ohio State's a one-way team, and I don't think Wisconsin can be competitive with them. We have questions coming in fast and furious, and I apologize if I miss some of them. I missed one from earlier, and I did copy and paste it, but somehow I missed it. And it's from our guy Jerry Beatty, and it's back to tonight's game. He's interested in the over. Open at 61 and a half, now at 64 and a half. USC Colorado, has he missed it, or is there still value? If you're consistently looking at overs after a three-point move against you, and again, this open is lowest, I mean, it's 59 and a half, uh, bookmaker on the open, and now it's, uh, I'm seeing 64 and a half, so the prevailing number. And conceptually, sure, it feels like an over game, but you're getting three, four, five points the worst of it. And if you're making bets like that, that's how you get to 48%. You know, uh, I'm, not, I'm just teasing you, Jimmy, but I'm saying if you're making negative expectation wages, if you're getting the worst of the number, it's, it's really hard to make money betting college football. Uh, so even if you like it, and I don't know, I wouldn't talk you out of liking it. Uh, although I worry about, I, I worry about Colorado's offense. They have not been able to, they've been bad on both sides of the ball in recent weeks, but these are the type of games that if you're a disciplined better has to throw out, you say, all right, I lean that way. I missed the number and you can get it in game. You might be still be able to get it after kickoff. Uh, but pre kickoff, you can't you can't be betting po- uh, games after a five po- uh, point move. You just can't do it. Leroy Flood says, Jimmy, what does Teddy think about Oklahoma State, Iowa State over opened at sixty four and a half at Pinnacle, still there, a three cent move towards the under, and it's at sixty three and a half at Bet Online, sixty four at other books. Oklahoma State, Iowa State under, or sorry, uh, o- excuse me, uh, over in Oklahoma State, Iowa State. So two teams that want to do different things, and when that happens, I usually don't get involved with the total. Iowa State is not an over team, all right? That defense is real. That secondary is real. And I like Iowa State for the game. Uh, I like Iowa State every game. And, I well, like I said, I, a month ago we talked about I'm going to bet them every time until they lose, and so far so good uh, with the Cyclones and the Chippewas in that regard. Uh, but the reason I like uh, – and if you notice, the teams that I tend to like are teams that play defense. Not about offense. You know, we're talking about the NBA and the Pelicans, what they're going to look like. I want to see New Orleans get a stop before I'm excited about betting on the Pelicans. And it's a similar story here. You know, uh, it's uh, who's getting stops. Iowa State can get stops. And if it's played at Iowa State's pace, Oklahoma State doesn't uh, doesn't have the big plays. But if the Cowboys are live here, they're live here because they're scoring. And they have a ton of big play options on that team. And 
Uh, I don't trust their defense. So it, it's it's a situation where since I, I believe in Iowa State, I believe in that defense, I won't, play, I, play, I won't play this game over. If you like the Oklahoma State side, I do think there's some mod, at least a modest correlation uh, between the Cowboys plus uh, and, and the over in this one. There's also a modest correlation between Iowa State and the under. All right, we're going to get one more question from Joe Kim. Then I'll go over at Teddy's place one more time for those of you who've joined us late. Joe Kim says, Wazoo versus Oregon. Says, Teddy, I know Oregon's defense is historic right now, but they haven't played or they haven't really played a good offense. And Washington Huskies light it up. Oh, sorry. And Washington Huskies lit up the Oregon defense for 30. Sorry, I'm reading this wrong. So let me do this again. Wazoo versus Oregon. Teddy, I know Oregon's defense is historic right now, but they haven't really played a good offense. And Washington Huskies lit up Oregon defense for 30. What do you think of this game? I don't know what to do with this game. This was the game where I flipped. All right? My initial reaction was, hey, Wazoo got right last week, and this is a letdown spot a little bit for Oregon, and they haven't faced a great passing game like this. And I'm interested. And Leach has owned the Ducks. No, no one on Oregon's roster has ever beaten Washington State. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Washington State's won the last four meetings. Uh, so no one other teams there ever even won, uh, let alone covered uh, in, in this point spread range. So the initial lean was towards a wazoo. And then I started thinking about the Utah game and what happened when Washington State went on the road and played a good defense. And again, Utah, uh, Oregon last week, one, Huskies have a good balanced offense with an NFL quarterback behind center. And that was in Seattle. And this isn't. So uh, I don't I didn't downgrade Oregon's defense off of last week's performance. And I worry about Washington State being able to handle the Ducks up front. And if Oregon gets the chance, again, this team uh, this team has had a lot of problems against uh, Leach and Wazoo in recent years. If they get the chance, they're going to run up the score. They'll punch in that third, fourth, fifth touchdown. So the initial lean was towards Washington State. I've absolutely talked myself out of it. Pass. And we have a pass there. Uh, quickly reviewing Teddy's plays on Monday, Iowa State. Minus eight and a half. Texas plus one. Virginia minus three. He got on Arizona State and then got off by backing UCLA. And he's in line for a middle there. And then he jumped on Charlotte, North Texas over. Western Kentucky plus five and a half. That was yesterday. And then today, Illinois, Central Michigan, Utah State. Three dogs that he added to his card. There he is. Teddy covers here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mornings. And we love having him. Please follow him on Twitter. Lowbaggers everywhere. Follow this man on Twitter. Teddy underscore covers. Very, very fun follow. Teddy covers another week in the books. I'm excited that NBA is here. I can't wait to cap NBA with you. I tailed Teddy with the Blazers minus two and a half. I think that's a great look with the ankle injury sustained by the Kings guards in their first game an ugly loss that they had and then we have college basketball coming very soon teddy i can't wait what a treat it is to roll with you each and every day here thank you so much for joining us and uh, have yourself a great weekend and thank you for sharing all your hard work with us hey thank you jimmy appreciate the opportunity appreciate all the low baggers out there guys kick some ass this weekend best of luck enjoy the games